Hi, welcome to a vinyasa practice. My name is Kaylee. Today we'll focus on the feet, but that does not mean that we will not be doing a lot of full body movement and a full body flow. So just keeping that in mind, start in child's pose. Bring your toes so that they're pointing toward the back of your mat so that you've got the tops of your feet connected to the ground. So you might feel a stretch in the ankles that way. That is a-okay. Make yourself as comfortable as possible, walking the arms forward, and then drop the forehead down. I keep my head lifted just so that my voice doesn't get too muffled here, but drop the forehead down or create a little pillow for your forehead by stacking your palms or your fists. See how many points of contact you can bring your awareness to that are touching the ground. So all of the surface of your body that's connected to the surface beneath you. This quality of grounding or support is so central to the, the role that our feet play. The feet are often our first point of contact with the environment around us, first physical connection where there's a sense of pressure, See if you can feel those points of contact and that really like, pleasant quality of pressure, maybe against the shins, the forearms, the forehead. And stay here for just a few more rounds of breath. You see if you can send your breath toward the sides of your ribs, filling your lungs inflate out to the right and the left side of your space. And stay here, one more round of breath in through your nose. And then perhaps you open your mouth and let a sigh escape. Start to walk the hands back a little closer to the body and then bring the knees all the way together. We're gonna keep stretching the tops of the feet here. Bring your fingers back behind you, just tenting up onto the tips of the fingers. And then start by lifting just one knee up. Keep your hips down on your heels or your inner ankles. And then switch knees. So you might not feel a big range of motion, but you probably feel a lot of stretch. So, so much of this practice is not about what it looks like. It's about the sensation. Drop that other knee down. Option to try and lift both knees up. There's a little bit of an element of balance here. If you want to challenge that even further, bring your hands to your heart. Pull your belly button toward your backbone so you're balancing from your core. And then go ahead and release the knees. Bring the hands out in front of you. Come onto the tops of the, or the balls of the feet rather, tucking the toes under. And then walk your hips back toward your heels, finding toes pose, stretching out through the soles of the feet, all of that connective tissue called the plantar fascia, waking up some of those little neuromuscular receptors in there. And then let's go ahead and walk the hands forward and untuck the feet. So we're going to alternate between these two, lift the knees, perhaps drop the knees, bring the hands forward, tuck the toes under, send the hands to the heart, maybe finding a little bit more intensity there. We'll move between these two, hands down, untuck the toes, shift back, maybe hands to heart as you lift the knees. Drop the knees, tuck the toes, maybe hands to the heart as you shift back toward your heels. Keep going, there's no need to move really fast here. Just tune into the sensations in your feet, your ankles, maybe your shins as well. And then start to deepen your connection with your breath. So using those big breaths in through the nose. And then ideally, if it feels okay, keeping the lips sealed as you exhale back out through your nose, constricting the back of the throat, keeping the jaw soft. For Ujjayi Pranayama. We're just here for three. Meet me in hands and knees in two and one. Come to all fours. Untuck the toes and paddle out the tops of the feet for a moment. Nice neutral spine. And then tuck the toes again. Find cow. So you're on the balls of the feet and then drop the chest down toward the center of your mat as you lift the chin, lift the tailbone. Take a breath in. 
find cat untucking the toes. Press into the tops of the feet and the palms of your hands. You curl into that rounded spine shape. Back to cow. Come on to the balls of the feet as you take a big breath in. And then cat, tops of the feet press down as you exhale. Push into your hands, shoulders toward your ears. Two more times. Breathing in, playing with that tuck of the toes. Breathing out, coming on to the tops of the feet. Once more with your breath, long in breath. And then cat again as you exhale. Tuck the toes under, keep the knees where they are, keep the shoulders where they are. So shoulders are right over your wrists. And then you're just gonna float the knees like a centimeter up off of the mat. Keep pressing down into your hands, drop the knees down. See if you can move almost nothing except for the knees as you lift the knees up. Hold for three, two, one, drop the knees down. One more time, press the floor away, lift the knees to a little hover for three. This time in two, we're gonna find down dog and one, keep the knees bent as you scoop the hips back, straightening your legs at the end. Take a few rounds of breath and down dog, do your thing. You can wag your hips side to side or alternate bending into one knee and then the other. Maybe you give your head and your neck a little gentle shake or a nod. From downward facing dog, look toward the top of your mat and then take a bunch of steps or one big one so that your feet land between your hands. Bend the knees as you find a halfway stretch and wing your arms by your side. See if you can find a parallel alignment with the hips and the ribs. So your torso is parallel to the ground and your arms are parallel to your torso as well. Reach the crown of the head forward so the back of the neck is nice and long here. Take a breath in. And then if you can, bind your hands at your lower back, interlacing the fingers and fold forward as you exhale. Soften the knees, maybe shift the weight from foot to foot. So the feet are most likely pretty close together here. So you're feeling maybe that element of balance tick in. We're gonna release the bind, heel to the feet to whatever spacing feels most stable for you. And then slowly with soft knees, unroll all the way up to standing. Once you're upright, reach the arms up toward the ceiling, lift the toes up toward your kneecaps. So you feel the quads engage there. Big stretch, breathe into it. Bring your hands to your heart, drop the toes down slowly. Set your eyes onto the tips of your fingers or maybe you close your eyes all the way down. And then just get as present as you can with your feet. You can wiggle the toes around, shift forward and backward. We'll take one deep cleansing breath here. Big inhale, pulling prana and energy and nutrients into your body. And then open mouth exhale, offering it back up. Blink your eyes open, reach your arms upward on an in-breath. And then bow forward, long exhale. We're just gonna take two rounds of sun salutation A. Lift up halfway, take a breath in. Plant the hands, sit back to a plank pose, and then just shift forward and backward. Wake up through the ankles a little bit. Shift forward as far as you safely can. And then lower half or all the way down. Take it nice and slow. Slow means we find all those little pockets of strength, potential. Cobra or up dog. Press into the tops of the feet. Really try and pull your belly button toward the space in front of you if you're in up dog. And then downward facing dog. Send your hips up and back. Look toward your knees or your navel. Breathe in. And breathe out. Look forward. Take a breath in to prepare. And then exhale as you walk, step, or hop your feet to the top. Halfway stretch, option to wing the arms again, breathe in. Fold forward, option to interlace at the low back as you exhale with the bind. Rise all the way up on the inhale, big stretch, maybe you lift the toes. Bring your hands to your heart as you exhale. 
Reach arms up, breathe in. Bow forward and empty out. Halfway stretch, take a long inhale to prepare, and then high to low plank as you exhale and smooth empty. Cobra or up dog, finish the breath, scoop the chest up, and then downward facing dog, press the hips back. Take one breath in, and a nice long breath out. Look forward, lift up onto the tippy toes as high as you possibly can. Empty your breath, bend your knees a bit, and then step walk or hop between your thumbs. Halfway stretch, breathe in. Forward fold, exhale. Rise all the way up on the inhale. Bring your hands to your heart on your exhale. Root down into your right foot, and then lift the arms and your left knee. With the left knee lifted, flex your foot and draw some circles with your left ankle. Circles in one direction for three, two, one. Switch the direction of those ankle circles. Try and focus on mobilizing just the ankle joint for three, two, one. Lift up high as you take a big breath in. We're gonna find lightning crescent. Take a big step with the ball of your left foot to the back of the mat, wing your arms by your side. Drop the back knee, reach the arms up, finding a supported crescent lunge. Find your balance here. And then we're going to take a row. Bring your arms down in front of you with the palms facing forward. Row the elbows back as you straighten the right leg out. So a balancing version of Hanumanasana, a balancing half split. Let's do that again. Inhale, come back into that supported crescent lunge. Maybe you let the hips drop forward. Exhale, row the arms wide row as you straighten right leg for a Hanuman. Keep going, inhale, reach it up, hips drop forward toward the top of the mat. Exhale, Hanuman with that wide arm row, shoulders down your back. Two more times, breathe in. And breathe out. One more, inhale. Meet me in Hanuman with the wide arm row. Stay here or interlace the hands at the lower back. We're gonna play around here. You're on the ball of the right, or ball of the left foot and the right heel. So you're gonna lean back a little bit, pull the belly button toward the back bone. And then maybe we're gonna lift that right heel up for three, Ooh, two, one, we'll drop it down. Reestablish your balance. We'll try that two more times. Just imagine lifting the heel. Maybe it's not gonna go anywhere today, but play around with lifting it up for three or imagining it lifting two, one, drop the heel down. Last time, lift for three, two, the wobbles are setting in over here, one, drop that heel down, release the bind, walk the hands forward, and then find a dragonfly twist, lift the back knee up, reach the right arm up, find that rotation in the ribs, and create some length in your spine as you breathe in. From Hanumanasana here, we're gonna drop the back knee down and reach the right arm toward the back of the mat. So to spin to the knife edges of your feet, pointing the right toes toward the right side, pointing the left toes toward the left side. So hips are sagging, and maybe you feel a stretch in that right outer butt area. Push the mat away as you lift the hips, reach that right arm like a rainbow, over in front of the body toward the front of your space, right bicep trailing right ear. And then pretty big transition coming up. We're gonna try and bring that left knee and right elbow together. So come onto the sole of the right foot first and then under your body, right elbow, left knee. Reach with your right foot to catch the left, excuse me, reach with your right hand, which part of the body, to catch your left foot Extend the left leg forward, drop the butt down. So you're facing probably the right side of your space. We're gonna set up a seated figure four. Use your right hand to place that left foot on the top of the right thigh, bring the hands back behind you. Flex your left foot, and then take a little rock side to side here with the hips. Breathe in and breathe out. We're gonna slowly let that left foot drop all the way to the mat outside of the right knee, setting up for a seated spinal twist. Left hand comes down, reach the right arm up on an in-breath. 
and then hook the outside of your left knee with your right elbow, finding your spinal twist. Okay, and root down through both sides of your sit bones here. Let the inhales stretch from the tailbone all the way up through the crown of the head. It might feel good to take a few breaths, nodding your chin toward the right shoulder and toward the left shoulder. Eventually, look toward the back of your mat. We're going to turn this into balancing half moon. So unravel the arms. The left hand is going to come down somewhere in front of your left foot. And then we'll lift the right limbs all the way up and open, peeling open. And spin the right hip on top of the left, spin the right side of the ribs on top of the left. Take one more long, big breath in. Reverse warrior, take a big step with your right foot to the back of the mat, what was the front, and then lift that left arm up and open. You can adjust your feet so that you've got some mat space to work with here. Stay in your reverse warrior, but lift your right heel up. Or straight down through the base of your right big toe. We're going to drop the right heel back down and lift it up. Little heel raises. Half strengthening here for five, four, three, two, one. Keep the heel down, straighten that right leg out. Reach up with your left hand to catch the right wrist. And then lift the ball of the right foot, push into your right heel, lower the foot, lift the foot. So a little tibialis, the muscles in the front of your left shin. Let's re-bend that front knee, take it back into reverse warrior. The whole sole of your left foot is anchoring down on an in-breath. And then circle your hands to frame that left foot. Step it back high to low push up. Cobra or up dog, breathe into it. And then downward facing dog on the exhale. Right away, look towards your thumbs and then take a big step or a hop to the top. Find that halfway stretch. Maybe you play around with winging the arms, breathe in. Maybe you interlace the fingers for that bind, fold forward on the breath up. And roll all the way up, big stretch on the in-breath. Bring your hands to your heart as you empty. Feel the connection between the left foot and your mat. Start to lighten up the weight in your right foot and then lift the right knee, lift the arms. Circle the right ankle for four in one direction. Three, two, one. Switch the direction of those ankle circles. Really try and move through your right foot. Three, two, one. One, take a big breath in as you lift the arms and the knee. And then a lightning crescent, wing the arms back, bring the ball of the right foot to the back. Drop your right knee, find your supported crescent lunge as you reach the arms up, let the hips melt forward. And then we're gonna find that wide arm Hanumanasana row. Exhale, bend the elbows back, straighten that left leg out. Inhale, back to your supported crescent. Exhale, Hanuman with a row. Four more times, breathe in, breathe out, keep going. Three more, like you're moving through like warm maple syrup here. So we're generating a little bit of internal tension, but not squeezing so hard that the prana gets stuck last time. Meet me in Panamanasana. interlace the hands at the lower back maybe, lean back. You can also bring your hands to your hips or to your heart here. Lean back so you're on the ball of your right foot here. And then we're going to play around. Try and keep the hips relatively level. I'm shifting way over to the right. Try not to do that. And lift the left leg, perhaps for three. Ooh, two, one. Lower that left heel down. We'll try two more on this side. Lift holds for three. But remember, you could just be imagining. Two, one. Lower it down. Imagining that lift actually does a lot for our neuromuscular connection. Maybe we lift and hold or imagine for three, oh, two, one. Drop that foot down. Drag and fly twist when you're ready. Rebend the left knee, plant the right hand. Spin open toward your left. Hug the inner thighs toward each other like you're closing up a pair of scissors here and create space in your spine as you breathe in. 
And breathe out. We're going to drop the back knee down. Reach your top arm back. Start to pivot your toes toward the left side of your yoga mat. And then reach that left arm way, 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 way back. Push into your front foot. Lift the hips. Rainbow left arm right. over your left ear. Walk that left foot back a little bit if you need. So you can press down through the sole of the left foot and the palm of the right hand. Then we will bring left elbow to right knee under the body. Reach down with your hand, catch the right foot, extend the right leg, sit your butt down and guide your right ankle into place over the top of the left thigh. Hands come back behind you so you're in that seated spinal twist. Flex through your right foot and shift the hips gently side to side. This could be a tiny little movement. You might play around with nodding your chin the opposite direction as your legs are going. So a little bit of just contralateral movement in the body. Maybe even close the eyes down. We're gonna set up for that seated spinal twist. So this lifted right foot, we're gonna float it all the way down and then reach the left arm up. Right fingers are tending back behind you. Okay, root down through both of your sit bones and then hook that right knee with the left elbow. Slowly nod the chin from shoulder to shoulder or set your eyes to one point, maybe back toward your back shoulder or somewhere in line with your sternum. Take your eyes forward. We're gonna slowly unravel that twist. Bring the right hand up and then way out in front of you. Finding half moon, lifting left limbs, peeling up and open on this side. Take a couple breaths to really stretch through the front lines of your body, maybe pointing that back toe. Slow motion, we find reverse warrior, bending the right knee, stepping the left foot to the back, reach the right arm up, and then maybe take up a little bit more space on your mat. I tend to migrate toward the back side of the mat in that flow. All right, lift the right heel and then lower it down. Little lift and lower. As soon as that right heel touches, try and pop it right back up. Focus on pressing through the ball of your right foot. So we're activating the calf for three, two, one. Keep the heel down, straighten up that right leg, reach left hand up to catch the right wrist. Push through your heel and then lift the ball of your foot and lower. So a little lift and lower through that foot. Pull all of your toes toward your right knee. So keep pulling the toes up toward the shin. For three, two, one. Reverse warrior, big bend through that front knee. Finish a long inhale. And then circle your hands, step it back high to low plank. Cobra or up dog, breathe in, big stretch for the front lines. And then downward facing dog as you empty. We're gonna change up that sequence a little bit, but we'll keep some elements in. Start by floating the right leg high, put a bend in your right knee, and then stay here circling the right ankle or the right knee or flip your dog. If you flip your dog, press into those points of contact particularly your feet, particularly the balls of your feet, breathe in. And then exhale, bring the right knee to the right elbow. So you're back in that high push of the right knee, squeezing right elbow. We're gonna take a big step outside of the right hand and find Skandasana, pivot open toward the left side of your mat. You can keep the fingers tented for some support for your balance. Or you can play around with bringing the hands to your heart or opening up the arms like wings. Nice long breath in. Stay here as you exhale. Dragon fly twist is where we're headed next. Spin all the way back so you come onto the knife edges of your feet and drop the hips low as you reach that right arm toward the back of your mat. And then push the floor away. We're gonna set up that seated figure four, right elbow, left knee, catch the left foot, plant it on the top of the right thigh, and then shift side to side. 
Look toward the back of your mat. The sole of the left foot's gonna float down. Reach the right arm up as you inhale. Twist toward that top left knee as you exhale. Stay here, take a breath in. Look toward the back shoulder, exhale. Look forward on an in-breath, balancing half moon. Feel all the way up and open. And then big step to reverse warrior. Inhale, reach that top arm up. Cartwheel your hands, step it back, high to low push up. You may have to adjust a little bit as we cycle through this version of our flow today. Meet me in downward facing dog. When you're there, left leg lifts, put a bend in the knee, stay here, circling the ankle or the knee, or flip your dog. Pressing the floor away, finding those points of contact, finding that stability. The more you push into the ground, oftentimes the more stable your body feels. Breathe in. And then sweep that top hand down. Bring your left knee outside of your left hand for skandhasana. Hands to heart or find your balance. Dragonfly twist. Right hand comes down. Spin up and open to the left. Keep circling that top arm toward the back leg. And then press into the floor as you sweep that top arm forward over your left ear. Right knee to left elbow, and then catch the foot, set up your seated figure four. Take a moment to shift the hip side to side, recalibrating, releasing anything in the edges of the pelvis. And then set up your seated spinal twist. Right foot plants, left arm lifts up, breathe, and hook the right elbow as you empty. Take a full round of breath in. Just a little deeper, wrap your lungs around your heart as you exhale. Look forward on an in-breath, balancing half moon. Stretch and lift and peel open. And then take a big step to the back for reverse warrior. Steady yourself here, breathe in. Cartwheel the hands, step it back, high to low. Third of Amukha, this is upward dog, inhale. Adho Mukha, downward facing dog on the exhale. Stay here, let's clear that out. Breathe in through your nose, bring some fresh energy in. And open up the mouth, exhale, let it go. Look forward, lift the heels. Big step, walk, or hop between your thumbs. Halfway stretch, breathe in. Chest to thighs, empty out. Rise all the way up on the in-breath. Hands to heart as you exhale. Root down through the right foot, lift the left knee, lift the arms, breathe in. Airplane, fly it back as you empty. Pause here for a moment. Keep reaching back through your left foot like you could find more space in your left hip socket. Soft bend in your right knee to protect the joint space. To keep that really good communication from the sole of the right foot all the way up through those channels of energy, through those neuromuscular connections to the brain. We're gonna find a high crescent lunge this time. Drop the ball of that foot back, reach your arms up, breathe in. Find that row as you exhale, straightening the front leg. So it's like pyramid, you're on the ball of the back foot. Rebend the front knee, inhale, reach up high crescent. Exhale, tip forward, row the arms back. You can keep the front knee bent or straighten it out. Three more, inhale, reach. Exhale, row, pull it back. Try and bring the spine parallel to the ground. Two more times, breath in. Breath out. Inhale. Row back on the exhale, hold it here. Drop the hands. Wide pyramid variations. See if you can bring that back heel down and lift the right toes up. So you're pushing into your right heel and the left heel is down. Pull the right toes toward your right shin. Stay here or if you need a little bit more, walk both of your hands over toward the right side of your mat, toward the outer edge of the right leg. Keep pressing that right hip back. It's gonna wanna pull forward. Our body's always trying to keep us comfortable, and there's some wisdom in that, trying to keep us safe. 
get really, really present and tuned in to where that growth zone is for you. So we never want to completely dismiss the body's efforts and signalings to keep us safe. But maybe, maybe, maybe we remind ourselves that we're often a little bit stronger than we think we are. If you walk your hands to the right, reframe that right foot and leg. We're going to find a standing split here. Bring the sole of the right foot down, lift the left leg up. In standing split, bring your left knee to your right calf, bend into both of your knees deeply. Stay here or reach your right arm up, finding a twist. Okay. Stay here or reach the right hand back to catch the left foot. Start to kick in to that uh, right hand with the left foot. Instead of coming all the way up into a bound dancer, reach your left arm forward. Pull forward with that left arm as you press back with your left knee. If you're fortunate enough like me to have something to support yourself with, go for it. We're just here for three, two. We're gonna come back to standing split in one. Hands down, left leg unravels on the in-breath. And then take a big step to the back of the mat with your left foot, drop the left knee. Supported crescent, breathe in. Row it back just one time as you empty. Stay here, bring your hands to your heart, and then shift forward so you're standing on that back knee. See if you can bring your right knee underneath your right hip as well. Tuck the toes under. So we're setting up for a supported camel. Reach your arms up, breathe in. Bend your elbows, cactus the arms, and give your glutes a little squeeze, and then roll the shoulders down your back. Inhale, reach the arms up, sit back toward your heels. Nice neutral spine. Exhale, stand up tall, squeeze the glutes, cactus the arms. Inhale, sink back to the heels, reach up. Exhale, cactus elbows, stand tall on the knees. Two more times, breathe in. And breathe out. Once more, inhale. Stay here, exhale, hold in camel. Option to bring your hands to your back and reverse namaste or bring your hands to your hips. Take a breath in, plant the hands, the, uh, all fours around your spine, cat pose. Take it into cow on an in breath. And then downward dog as you empty. We're on the right side still. Inhale, lift the right leg, bend the knee, stay or flip. Take a big breath in. As you exhale, start flipping back over. This time, right knee comes to left elbow. Shoot that right leg out to the left. Maybe you lift the left arm up. Maybe you drop the right foot down. You're here for four. If you're with me, pulse that heel up. Three, two, one. All the way back to three-legged dog. Nice long inhale. Step both of your feet to the top of the mat. As you exhale, lift up halfway. Breathe in. Hold forward and empty out. Come all the way up on the in breath. Bend your knees, hands to your heart as you exhale. So we're in a little chair. Inhale, stand up, try and lift up onto the balls of the feet. Exhale, drop the heels, sink low into your chair. Four more times, breathe in, breathe out. So maybe you're challenging the balance, inhale. Exhale, two more times, breathe in. Breathe out, try and keep the knees in line with the ankles. In, take it low on the out. Stand all the way up, interlace your fingers, except for the thumbs, press your palms toward the ceiling. Lift your heels up. Hold here, hugging the inner thighs gently toward each other. Feeling some engagement through the outer edges of the hips and thighs. This area of the body that's really important for stabilization. Set the eyes straight in front of you at some point that's out past the tip of your nose. Three more deep breaths. Pull your belly toward your back with the exhales. One more, breathe in. Tadasana, drop the heels, drop the arms to your side. All right, we're gonna root down through the left foot. We've got that sequence on the other side. 
right knee and arms come up, breathe in, see if I can remember it. Airplane, fly that right foot back. Point your right toes and really reach long through that right leg. Soft bend in your left knee. And find space in your right hip socket as if someone's gently holding that right ankle and pulling it back in space without letting your hips move. High crescent lunge. Come on to the ball of the right foot, reach your arms up. Option one is to find that pyramid stance as you row. This is gonna be the more challenging option. You can also take more of a lightning crescent shape. So high crescent on the in-breath. Your version of that row as you exhale, either straightening that left knee or keeping it bent. Three more, breathe in. Breathe out. Inhale. And exhale. Last time, breathe in. Breathe out. Release the hands down, finding your pyramid variation. See if you can shift back onto the entire right foot as you lift the left foot, just coming onto that left heel. Pulling all of your left toes toward your left shin, stay here, or keeping the hips level, walk your fingers over to the outside of the left leg. Let go of the head, the neck. Maybe you even part your lips and teeth just a little bit to relax any tension in the masseter muscles of your cheeks. If you framed, if you walk your hands to the left of your left leg, rather, start to frame your left foot. Roll back onto the sole of the left foot as you find standing splits. Right leg lifts up. From standing splits, bring your right knee to your left calf for your Shiva squat. So stay here, keeping your right fingers underneath your right shoulder, either tented or hovering. And then perhaps you peel that left arm up and open. Soft through the left fingers, but active in your chest, pulling the belly button toward the backbone. Stay here or reach back, catching your left, right foot, excuse me, that's which foot is up there. Right foot with left hand, point that right knee back in space, kicking in to your left hand. Stay here or reach the right arm forward. So body is being pulled in opposite directions. If you stretch that right arm forward, really reach forward as you press back through the right knee for three, two, one. Take it back to standing splits. Nice slow motion. Lift up high on an in-breath. And then drop the ball of that back foot to the back of the mat. As you exhale, drop the back knee down. Supported crescent lunge here. Breathe in. And then roll the elbows, Hanuman, hold it here. This time, we're gonna come to standing on that back knee. Bring the left knee underneath the left hip and untuck the toes. Bring the toes together, let the knees part a little bit. From here, we're gonna send the hips back in space, hands at heart center, and then stand right back up onto your knees and shins. Hinge it back and then come right back on up. You can bring the hands to the hips as well. And if this feels like way too much load on your quads or your knees, hinge your hips. So drop the hips toward the heels and then come right back on up. If it felt okay to do that first version where your hips stay open and play around with that, getting a lot more load into the quads this way, hinging at the hips, getting a lot more load into the glutes. Let's alternate. Let's do one, hinge the hips back toward the heels. And then one, stand up tall, bring the hands to the heart. Keep the hips flat as you lean back. Rise it up, hinge hips to heels. Rise it up, heart center, lean it back. Keep going just like this. Find a range of motion that is pain free but challenging. So we wanna work in our fullest possible range of motion that's free from pain, where we're not compensating in some other way. Way more effective to take a smaller range of motion and build super strong and healthy 
movement patterns and pathways. Then to overdo it here, just for the sake of getting deeper into this pose today, and then you find yourself having to kind of backpedal a little bit. So find that edgy spot where you're challenged, but you're also supported, right? This is the sweet spot where we grow with the resources and the support that we need to feel inspired, to feel driven, to feel curious and willing to push just a little bit. Last time, stand up on to your knees. Bring the knees closer together. Bring your hands to your lower back, to your hips. So feet and knees are hips distance. Little engagement through the glutes here. Keep the tailbone long. Take a breath in as you shrug your shoulders up toward your ears. Big inhale. Exhale, roll the shoulders down your back. Press your hips forward. Camel pose, breathe. Five deep breaths. Close the eyes down if you'd like. Breathe right into the center of your chest. Notice the sensations in your body. Last big inhale. And then neutral spine, send your hips to your heels. Let your palms come face down on the tops of your thighs. Close your eyes for a moment and just notice the sensations in your body. You find a little bit more alignment in your spine without straining for it. Sit back in a shape that feels tall. Or you can allow the breath and the prana to move deep. Oftentimes after camel, you might feel some intensity of sensation and energy in the lower back or the back of the shoulders. Let every deep breath be an opportunity to bring nutrients and energy into those spaces in your body that maybe feel a little tender that we asked a lot of. Let every exhale be an opportunity to carry away any byproducts, any tension, any lactic acid, any mental or emotional aggravation that might get stirred up, it's fine, let it, let it bubble up. And then allow your exhales to be an opportunity to gradually clear some of it away. Bring your arms down by your side, and then as you inhale, sweep them up overhead, find a stretch. And exhale, let it all go. Blinking the eyes open. All right, we're just gonna roll into a couple stretches and a little bit of foot massage before we land in Shavasana. So we'll start in a half butterfly, extend the right leg, in the sole of the left foot somewhere close to the inside of the right hip or thigh. And then take both of your hands onto the left foot. Let's bring left hand onto left ankle and right hand onto the right foot. Bring your thumb to the spot right beneath the base of your left big toe. And then give that area a little bit of pressure. Maybe you draw some circles with that right thumb. Move your thumb off of that big toe mound and then move it to the base of each one of your toes, maybe an inch or two toward the middle of your foot. Find those little pressure points. And do that a couple times. If some other way of massaging your foot just feels right to you, do that. I'm giving cues in case it's a little awkward or new for folks. Bring your right thumb to the base of your arch, so in front of the left heel, and then draw a line from that left heel up toward your left middle toe. Pressing, stretching the skin, and then bring your hand and massage through the heel and the arch of the foot back toward that Achilles tendon. 
If it feels okay here, pick that foot up entirely and then draw some circles manually with your ankles. It's different when you're manipulating that range of motion switch direction. We're getting into more of the kind of passive range of motion or the connective tissue by relaxing the skeletal muscle. We want a little bit of both. All right, pick up that whole foot and then bring it outside of your right leg, finding shoelace pose. So the left foot points to the side or back behind you. Sit up tall, flex your right foot. You'll feel a stretch in the right hamstring and then hinge forward. And just about four more rounds of breath here. Maybe you close your eyes. You could relax the right foot if you're still holding it in that flexed position. Just notice the change in sensation of the stretch. See if you can back away from any urge to label things as better or worse here. And just find that what works for you. When you're ready, slowly start to unroll, stacking your vertebra, letting the head come up last. Untangle that left leg, bring your hands back behind you, and then just let the feet splay out and in. You can paddle out the knees a couple times. A little love to those joint spaces. And then we're going to keep that, um, that right leg long. That's what we did, yes. And bring the left foot to the inside of the right thigh for half butterfly over here. And again, you bring some pressure into that foot or ankle. Which side did we already do? We already did that side, huh? <laughs> bring your right foot to the inside of the left leg and give your right foot a little massage. We'll take a good minute or so to massage the foot. If you want, you can run back to that same pressure point, bringing the thumb to the base of each toe, pushing down, finding a amount of pressure that feels good, maybe drawing that line from the heel up to the base of the third toe. Maybe massaging back into the heel and the Achilles tendon. So this little self-massage, we're stimulating all of these mechanoreceptors. Really, really good actually for our feet to keep those neural muscular connections strong. When we're born, our feet actually have the same potential for uh, sensitivity as our hands, but because we use our hands so much and we put our feet in shoes, which is a good thing a lot of the time, um, some of those neural muscular connections just because they're not being used can kind of fade away. So bringing back a little bit more of that sensitivity online. Really helpful thing for balance, for circulation. Pick up the foot and then circle the foot manually. Use your hands to circle that foot around in space. Switch the direction. It's okay if you're not getting a ton of range of motion. And then when you're ready, we're gonna set up half shoelace, bringing your right foot outside of the left leg. The right toes could point out to the left or maybe they tap back behind you. My foot doesn't like doing that. So find a range of motion that feels okay with your ankle. Flex your left foot to start. Take a breath in and then hinge forward. Once you settle into the stretch, you have the option to relax your left foot and your ankle. Maybe you nod the chin slowly from shoulder to shoulder to let go of any gripping or clenching that might be happening in the shoulders or the jaw. One more round of breath. Let yourself melt a little bit deeper on your exhale. And then slowly start to uncurl. Bring that right leg out in front of you. You can paddle out 
out again or separate the feet and let the feet flop in and out. And even though the feet are moving in and out, try this out with me. Bring your attention to your hips, to this joint of the top of the leg, that femur bone in the top of the leg into the hip socket. So when your toes point in, we're finding hip internal rotation. When your toes point out, we're finding hip external rotation. And because we're just flopping, we're finding a really natural range of motion, not forcing body to end ranges right now. Let's slowly bend the knees, plant the feet. Feet are hips distance apart, bring the hands back behind you. Last little bit, just in case you feel like you need a little bit more, we're gonna press down, lift the hips up, breathe in, and then lower the hips, extend the legs, press into your heels, lift the hips, you're in your reverse plank. Drop the hips, plant the feet, lift the hips, so you've got a little hip thrust, squeeze the glutes. Alternate, hips down, legs long, hips up, hips down, bend the knees, plant the feet, lift the hips. Take a couple more. Continue to take deep ujjayi breaths. Meet me in that reverse table. Push the floor away, keep lifting the hips. See if you can lift the hips just as high as the knees here. Take a breath in through your nose and then stick your tongue out as you exhale. Lower the hips all the way down slowly. Roll down onto your back gently. Hug the knees into your chest. Give yourself a gentle squeeze or maybe a little rock side to side. And take a moment to appreciate yourself for spending some time taking care of your body, getting your feet a little extra attention. And when you're ready, meet me in a resting shape, either finding Shavasana or traditional resting shape or taking some other pose I'll offer today, legs up the wall if you have a wall space some other pose that feels like a place that you can let go of efforting. The legs up the wall is especially nice for the feet and the legs. Do what feels right for you in this moment. Trust that you've done enough in your practice. And most importantly, as we linger here for just about a minute of rest together, be open to the possibility that you have always been and will always be enough. you're ready to move on with your day and move off of your mat, you can start to take some bigger breaths and invite some movement, maybe a nod of the head or a wiggle of the toes, rotate through the wrists. Give yourself all the time in the world to meet me in a seated position, seeing this transition as a sequence of infinite little yoga poses. In other words, move mindfully, be deliberate. Once you've found a seat, we'll close practice with one more big cleansing breath. As you inhale, sweep the arms up, let the shoulders hunch up into the ears, sip in as much breath as you possibly can. And then open mouth, exhale, let it all go. Thank you for sharing some time with me today. Be taking great care of yourself and I hope to see you again soon.